My journey started sometime four years ago, when I was an art student in the National University of Singapore. Not exactly where you expect to find a tech startup guy. As part of the graduation requirement, I have to take um, modules that's outside of uh, arts. So I took one called Sky and Telescope, a practical introduction to the skies and optical equipment. It took me on a journey two hours north of Singapore into a small town called Mersing. You don't even see Mersing on most maps on Malaysia because it's a small place and most people don't go there for traveling. That's where it is, on the eastern coast of Malaysia. The reason we had to go two hours up north was because of light pollution. Singapore is a very concentrated population. We are the most light polluted country in the world. Sadly, this is not something unique to Singapore. Over 60% and 80% of Americans and Europeans could no longer see their night skies from where they stay. In fact, it's gotten so bad that in 1990s, in San Francisco, there was a blackout People called the police to notify them that there is weird clouds hanging out in the skies. <laughs> what they've just seen was the Milky Way. <laughs> Nature has gotten so distant from us that what's natural is now becoming alien to us. When I saw the Milky Way for the first time immersing, it spanned from horizon to horizon and I captured this image. What you see here is the Milky Way. And at the core of it, there's a supermassive black hole holding it all together. There are millions of stars within the Milky Way. Then there are millions of galaxies out there like the Milky Way itself. This was not an easy image to take. I had years of experience as a photographer, and I had the help of the people below the tree dying, tending to their telescope, helping me. My professor taught me a lot of stories uh, in this course. When you look up at the sky and you look at a star, it's not just something that's glowing. What it's doing is it's forging lighter elements into heavier elements through a process called nuclear fusion. That's how hydrogen becomes helium, becomes oxygen, carbon, and so on and so forth until you reach the element iron, where nuclear fusion does not work at all. So when a star tries to fuse iron, it explodes in a dramatic fashion called supernova. It spreads out all these particles that it has been forging over the millions of years only for it to be pulled back together again to form new stars and planets like our Earth. And that's why we are called stardust. We are literally made out of stars, particles that exploded millions of years ago. His story fascinated me, but I can't help but wonder why most of my classmates were not there with me on that night. After speaking to them, I realized the problem. The existing traditional astronomy equipment is just too heavy, expensive, and complex. And even though it was all on loan from the university, they did not want to be responsible for carrying it out and doing astronomy imaging. After searching for an answer, we realized that it can all be solved through automation, and all we require is computing power. And computing power is one thing we do not have a lack of. In 2009, NASA says that, your cell phone has more computing power than what they had available to them on Apollo missions. And those missions put men on the moon. Imagine how much computing power we have in our phones right now. And we are even more lucky today. We have hardware development kits like the Raspberry Pi, Marsboard, and Arduino that allows us to come up with new product ideas, allows us to test all these concepts without the uh, help from governments or MNCs which is where you usually see such innovations coming from. And that is exactly what we did. The first prototype for Tiny Moss is nothing more than a scientific camera plastered in front of one such development boards. Over the years, we've tested many of this with the sole purpose of bringing astronomy imaging to everyone. There are three key areas we try to make astronomy easier. The first one is astronomy itself. When you look at the night skies, there's so many stars out there, you don't really know what you're looking at. We built in an augmented reality star map to tell you exactly what stars and what constellations you're looking at. And if you look at the animation, you're searching for Mars and it points you exactly to where you should be looking at. And because we built in this technology, we can know exactly what you're pointing at. We can give you the correct capture settings to capture it like the professionals do. And we put in a noise reduction library, which is an automated noise reduction algorithm, similar to the ones that professional astronomers use. And in one fell swoop, 
all three difficulties are solved, and you can capture the nice guys with one click of your hand. And after three years of R&D, I finally have with me the world's smallest astronomy camera. This is one of eight <laughs> prototypes that we have right now. Uh, this is the noise reduction technology that we put in. On the left is the image captured by this guy. And that is very noisy. And after our noise reduction technology, it cleans it up. And that's how we are able to shrink down the form factor. You no longer have to use the best equipment of the line. And you can use something much smaller and still get very good results. We brought this out on a road trip to Melbourne and we managed to capture the Milky Way. What surprised us was we managed to catch the southern lights. So keep a look out on the lower left corner of the screen. When you see green flashes, that's actually the southern lights. We wanted to put the power of capturing the night skies in your hands, and that's why we chose to take a more uh, comprehensive route. We decided to go for crowdfunding, and we did it on Indiegogo. We spread a message to the crowdfunding community that we want to bring astronomy imaging, the power of astronomy imaging, and put it in your hands. And this is the video we showed them to convince them of what we're doing. We are all curious, each child peeking through a gap in the fence, every scientist hunting for an answer, and all the lovers staring up at the sky. While dreaming or while searching, we have always turned to the night sky, filled with the wonder of a billion stars and the infinite space around us. All of us look up, but how many of us can capture it, frame it, bring it home, and share it? The crowdfunding community re uh, responded tremendously, and we managed to raise our goal of 100,000 US dollars within the first four hours of our launch. Till date, we managed to thank you. Till date, we have raised over half a million US dollars in pre-orders, and I'm glad to say that this thousand units is going to start shipping 30 days from now. <laughs> Along the way of my journey, many people have asked me, "You're an art student. You should be doing arts." How is it possible that you are building a technology startup? Is this a scam? <laughs> <laughs> so my short answer to that question is, I work with a very talented and very dedicated team of people. On the left, I have my CTO, Li Wei. He's the best uh, engineer I know of. He actually joined the NUS Overseas College Program. And he became the CTO of a multi-million dollar startup over there, even though he was there for only a year. Beside him, there's Ashbrit. I met him in business school. He's a mechanical engineer by training, but he's fantastic at operations and advertising. And beside me, there is Raphael, one of the best content creators that I know of. He has touched almost all the videos on our YouTube channel. And that's how we leverage on each other's strengths to cover for our blind spots. And that's what makes Tiny Moss possible. The long answer is, I fail, and I fail a lot. My first tremendous failure happened about a decade plus ago. I was a student. I was 14 years old in my secondary school. There was a period of time before smartphone was very prevalent, so I'm kind of a little ancient. This is a FM radio transmitter kit. I wanted to pass messages to my friends across the classroom without the teacher noticing. <laughs> the problem was this guy works only in one direction and I wanted to have a second one to communicate effectively. I can't always be the one doing the talking. So I tried to build a second one because uh, each of this development kit cost 10 times my daily allowance. I went and bought all the components and tried to put them together and it looked something like that. And of course I failed. I was not trained in electronics engineering. That led me to go and find the smartest guy in school to help me out. And that's when I found my CTO, my childhood friend, Li Wei. We tried again, and we still failed. Of course, we are children back then, what are you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> we, 
My second failure happened when I was serving in national service. I was one of those lucky few people who was chosen to be a pilot trainee. It was my dream job since I was young. Most people pass the pilot training course after 15 flights, or they failed it after the 8th flight. I failed it on my 6th flight, which means I failed it on my 5th flight and I failed a second review. When that happens, the armed forces put you on compulsory leave. I was put on 10 days of leave, and I was quite upset, having just lost my dream job. My cousin noticed that, and he signed me up for a photography course. And that's when I put my all into understanding photography from the ground up, and I became top of the class. Throughout all these three years, one thought stuck to my head. And it was an idea shared by Steve Jobs during a convocation. He was saying, you cannot connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect the dots looking backwards. If I wasn't such a failure in trying to build my FM transmitter radio, I wouldn't have found my CTO. If I haven't been such a failure in trying to fly and failing on my sixth flight, I wouldn't have devoted myself into learning photography. The second thing I want to share with you guys is something very quite personal. The idea is don't let society's labor limit what you can do. I'm an art student doing a tech startup, and you may be a science person doing arts. But so long as you believe in what you're doing, you eventually find the resources to do it, whether through friends or whether through self-learning. This is an image I captured two weeks ago. That's the Marina Bay Sands Hotel, and that's the moon in the background. This was a photo that I conceived of five years ago, but I couldn't capture it until I had a tiny one. The reason is because the rental of telescopic equipment was so expensive that the rental alone would cost more than the whole tiny more system. So while I was capturing this image, I actually captured a whole series of time lapses. So let me show you that time lapse now. As you can see, you can use Tinymos not just for astrophotography, but for cityscapes as well. It's my personal goal for Tinymos not just to bring astrophotography to everyone and let you experience the night sky, but to become a symbol or product that allows you to capture what you see in your mind's eye, for you to convey your creative message to the rest of the world. And before I end today's speech, I'd like you guys to take a look at the skies tonight and realize that as beautiful as the stars are, what's really special is right here, for we are all made of stardust. Thank you. <laughs>